Okay, today I'm going to show you how to set up an RSS-driven campaign using MailChimp. Um, you're going to sign into your MailChimp can uh, excuse me, your MailChimp uh, account, and you're going to click on Campaigns. That's going to bring up the list of all the campaigns that you have, for, and then you come over here to the top right where it says Create Campaign, and click on the arrow. It's going to drop down, select RSS-driven campaign. Uh, it's going to open up for you. You're going to need to put in your RSS feed URL. If you don't know what it is, you can put in your blog URL and it will try to find it for you. Chances are, though, um, it's going to be your website slash feed and then the closing slash. Uh, you get to choose. This is a cool thing about doing MailChimp versus FeedBurner. You get to choose when you want it to go out. If you want... Um, your RSS feed to go out every day, every week, or every month. You also get to choose the time, uh, and then you can choose the days of the week. Now, if you unselect Tuesday, that doesn't mean that the things you post on Tuesday will not be sent to your readers. It just means that they will not receive it until the following email, which is on Wednesday. So let's click Next. On the next page, you're going to choose which, which list you want to send to. Let's send this one to Meet Penny Publications. And if you have your list divided up into different segments, you can then choose that. I'm going to send to the entire list. Click Next. And we're going to be able, any minute now, slowly, it's thinking. Uh, it always responds slower whenever I'm running the, the screen share software. <sighs> and of course it's going to run slowly because it knows that when I'm finished with this video, I want to take a nap. <laughs> Any day now, guys. Come on. Um, Alrighty. And maybe... It's going to work. Please. There. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Real life. Okay. You can name your campaign. This is something that only you are going to see. So we can call it Meet Penny Updates. And then you can change your emails. You could leave your email subject, this little generic thingy right here. But I recommend changing it something that shows your personality, but also identifies your website. So I would say, you know, because of the type of stuff that I post about, I would call mine um, encouragement, freebies, and deals. But I'd spell it correctly from... Me, Penny. Um, and then you've got your from name. That can be your LLC name. That can be, you know, your personal name. Your, but I recommend your website name or something that's got your website name in it. And then your from email address. Now, um, this one by default is putting in my Gmail, but I don't want that because um, Gmail has so many spammers that use that service. Whenever a newsletter goes out from a Gmail address, uh, most of the time it automatically goes to spam. So um, try to use something that doesn't end in a gmail.com. If you want to goof around with the tracking, social media, and your other options, you're welcome to do that. You can even personalize the field, the to field. If your readers are putting in their first names whenever they're signing up, you can have it you know, go straight to their name. Um, I don't do that. I feel like it's an invasion of privacy. All I get is their email address. But seriously, it's just a personal preference. It's nothing, nothing, uh, you know, that you can't do. The next part, this is another thing that sets this apart from FeedBurner. Um, you get to set up what you want it to look like. Now I'm going to use the email designer. Um, the MailChimp email designer is one of the main reasons why I uh, have been with MailChimp. I've tried out Active Campaign. I've tried out Active, excuse me, Aweber, and the the email designer with Mailchimp is just so easy, and it makes it look so nice. That um, that's why I prefer Mailchimp. I did talk 
briefly with the people at Mad Mimi, but because I send out what we call e-blast, which would be paid promotional emails to my list, um, Mad Mimi told me they would prefer not to do business. Oh, great. Page unresponsive. Let's see if we can wait this out and see if it'll load for us. Anyway, Mad Mimi said that they would prefer not uh, to work with me. So I took my business to MailChimp, and they're happy to have it. Okay. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Thank goodness. Um, okay, so this brings you into the editor. You choose first which template you want. I personally prefer having the main body and then the sidebar. Scroll down, scroll down. Uh, there, like, oh, here, the right sidebar RSS. That's the one. I like this one. Um, I select that. I did click select. There it goes. It's loading. Loading. Please wait. I could sing you some elevator music while we're waiting. Oh my goodness. The screen share software makes everything run so slow. But that's okay. As long as you don't mind waiting to learn. I don't mind waiting. I'm great at talking about nothing. Hey, here we go. Slowly. Come on. You can do it. There we go. All right. So, you do not forget the very, very, very tippy top. It says, use this area to offer a short preview of your email's content. So, please do. Um, I can't tell you how many emails I get in my inbox that actually, whenever I see it in my inbox it says please use this area to offer a short break people never changed it <laughs> feel terrible for them they never changed it so change this top area to say um uh let's say um great offers and information from the penny you know something blah, generic, but that would apply. You remember this can't be like a one-time only thing. This is your RSS, so it's going to be going out as often as you send it. Uh, you can add in your logo. Let's see. I'm going to pull up somewhere in here. There we go. Me penny. Um, so that's going to populate. And the great thing about selecting in the template the RSS one is this um, these, this main body area automatically populates with what you need. You don't have to mess with that. Just leave it alone. And then if you wanted to add an advertisement, a giveaway, whatever you've got, your freebie that you're offering for your subscribers, you can add that in your sidebar. And you can click and pull more things over. Come on, and drop it, and I'll let it go too soon. And um, it's a really handy way to build character into your newsletter. You can also um, install your uh, social media, you know, whatever you want to put in there. You're welcome to plug that in. Then you're going to click over next when you're satisfied. You know, I, obviously I wouldn't leave it like it is right now, but I'm just trying to get through. Um, I'm clicking next and waiting for that page to load. This is just going to confirm that you want your plain text to go because some people are going to say no to HTML, so you click next, and then you're given your confirmation page. Um, it's going to give you all the details. And you look at it, verify it, and you're saying, oh, okay, great. That's ready to go. Now, if at any time you need to stop what you're doing, um, you can click save and exit, and you can exit to wherever, or you can even log all the way out. But um, So that's how you set up an RSS campaign. It's really simple. Just play around with it. Have fun. Uh, remember that once it's set up, it's going to go, and you don't have to... Um, 
alter that unless you want to change your sidebar ads. And then you could always choose not to have a sidebar ad. It's just completely up to you. So thanks so much. Let me know if you have any questions.